I know about your journey because you and I have been chatting about how long have I known you? Yeah, at least oh, yeah, at like least a year, year I'd imagine, right? Yeah, so it feels like way longer, but <laughs> you know, through the power of LinkedIn and making instructional design friends nowadays, it definitely feels a lot longer. Sure. So I've known you. At the same time, I don't know as much about your journey to how you now got to everything with Goodwill. I know you were in education before, and I know that you have done a variety of different things, but how did you actually make your way into instructional design hearing about this and now you're in L and D. What's your what's your story, man? Yeah. Tell us yeah. About your story. <laughs> I think you and I both have that in common of having higher education be that stepping stone into this role. And I worked as an adjunct professor for several community colleges for about six years. Uh, and when my family decided to move from California to North Carolina, um, I started looking for very similar roles. But I very quickly realized there was just not as much support on the East Coast for teachers and not even to mention things like unions. It was like I, I literally got laughed at in a job interview one time when I told them how much I was making as an adjunct on the West Coast. And they were all like, huh, you would never make that over here. And I was all like, OK, red flag. Uh, that's an eye opener for me. And I felt like I kind of had to make a change, a shift for me and my family. So I fell into instructional design because I was doing research on what are like adjacent career shifts that I can make for teachers. And instantly I fell in love with the tools. I fell in love with the theories and the work. And I've always been a pretty creative person. Like I like to do, I like to monkey around a little bit with audio and video and create some interesting things. So it really called out to me. Um, so I hit the books, spent about six months learning everything I could, uh, including your book. <laughs> oh, and then, you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, six months more of applying for jobs. And um, I wanted a full-time position because I wanted benefits. Um, I really, all I could snag at the beginning was contract positions. Uh, so I'd be doing a little bit here, a little bit there, working on parts of projects. Um, and nothing against that. It gave me a good experience and gave me some good uh, background, but I was really gunning for those full-time positions. And after a long time, I got really sick of applying for all these remote positions on LinkedIn that would get 300 applicants in the first five minutes. So I started looking locally and I found Goodwill. Uh, and uh, originally I applied for a developer role within their organization, uh, but the recruiter called me, they looked over my portfolio and they're all like, hey, would you mind waiting a month and applying for this manager position that's coming out? And I was all like, oh man, it kind of sucks waiting another month for a job, but um, it was steady work. It met everything that I needed. And so it ended up working out. They hired me as their content development manager. And so now I oversee a team and we help develop and upskill our organization. You know, it's interesting that Goodwill didn't have the same amount of traction about that. Like Google's huge. Oh, totally. Totally. I think what helped is it was local. Uh, and I had been looking at a lot of remote position roles. Uh, this one did require, it was more of a hybrid, like uh, some days in the office, a lot of days at home. And that really wasn't on my radar. But once I started becoming frustrated, like I started broadening my horizons, you know, uh, throwing that net out into the different pools. And uh, this one really stuck. And I'm, oh, I'm happy. Okay. I really enjoy it. Oh, good, man. That's, that's that's great to hear. So now that makes a little bit more sense about everything. And also for all the people who are listening at home, hey, there is hope. Mm -hmm. You can do this. Because, <laughs> Russell, I hear about this from people, I don't know, at least like once a day mm -hmm. about the market's too competitive. What are we doing? How do I break into this? But yeah. just like to highlight what you said for a second, you were clearly busting your butt trying to be able to do this. You had a portfolio. You were doing freelance work at the same time, and then it all kind of came together. Right. I don't want to throw doom and gloom out there. Um, that's not okay. what I'm trying to do. I, I no. do agree that it is it is a competitive market right now, but I think, and I, I, I might be, I don't know if I'm the minority in this, but I think it's it's really the effort you put into your projects that will showcase and, and really demonstrate your value to other people. Like when that manager called me up and they're all like, hey, I know you applied for this, but I looked at your portfolio and you put a lot of effort into that. That shows me manager uh, standards. That shows me like that you could rise to this, this, uh, this level. Would you be willing to do this? I think that that really spoke towards the amount of effort that I would be willing to put in a role um, because I demonstrated it with something that, you know, I'm not getting paid for. 
but I think that if you are working on a portfolio, if you're working on some projects, just remember that it's going to live out there for a long time. Try and put your best foot forward. Yeah, that's good advice. It's I, I know right now it is tough, mm. but there is hope. And I yeah. keep on hearing stories about that. And the latest podcast episode I just talked about, I also mentioned too about how it is so much more nowadays the intentional instructional designer there's not so much so the accidental instructional designers which was very common for mm. a long time but even then just two days ago someone reached out to me and they're like hey luke i fell on this job by accident what do i do next and i was like how how did you <laughs> <laughs> I was like, the unicorn <laughs> exactly it was just like i i don't know anymore there's always outliers for things but <laughs> but i wanted to highlight that because it's so relevant for what people are currently going through 